Hello dear students. In this video lecture uh, we are going to take uh, the customer's perspective and uh, talk a little bit about customer's concerns and uh, also uh, a little bit about the criteria that the customer might use in selecting the supplier or selecting the offer of the supplier. So um, in this presentation there will be a little bit list like or checklist like uh, pictures that I show to you, uh, but uh, the idea really is to uh, try to provide you the kind of a concrete like tools uh, for understanding uh, what are the actual issues in customers uh, buying. Uh, let's start uh, from a picture that should be uh, rather familiar to you in uh, from previous uh, courses. And uh, this is about designing the procurement packages or designing the buying packages by the customer. The customer should carefully think about whether uh, they are going to buy the whole complete solution and give all responsibility to the supplier or to buy just uh, uh, partial packages uh, from uh, the, the suppliers. And then the question, of course, is uh, that who integrates and who controls uh, the uh, creation of the whole solution. Uh, now also one question is that uh, is the customer capable of uh, doing the buying? And if so, does the customer have uh, resources available and right people to uh, uh, assign for this kind of a big job because it really requires buying is a really elaborate process and it requires a lot of uh, work. And if no, then uh, the customer might want to buy a complete solution and give all responsibilities for uh, the supplier. Of course, there are some uh, inherent risks uh, in, in that strategy as well. Or then the customer can uh, buy a consultant to manage the buying and manage the project in a way, a kind of an EPCM consultant or, or, or EPCM contractor or so. But what is really important is that uh, the packages to be bought must anyways be uh, carefully uh, designed. And uh, when uh, developing those packages, uh, the customer should, or the buyer should uh, definitely think that uh, the interfaces between certain subcontractors, for example, are in a very natural places. You don't want to create such packages where there are some very complicated interfaces that and require a lot of communication between the subcontractors and probably uh, it might even end up to uh, uh, controversies and conflicts with the uh, potential subcontractors when they are arguing that who's uh, fault is uh, this and this problem that came uh, uh, in between the uh, interfaces of the responsibility areas. Well, um, this picture uh, or this list uh, addresses uh, the evaluation, buyer's evaluation of potential suppliers. So is the supplier a suitable partner? So does it have right competencies? Uh, does the supplier uh, take the uh, selling seriously enough? And is the attitude right uh, that can be reflected from, for example, the budgetary quotation? In the second bullet, is uh, the procured resource available? Does the supplier uh, promise that certain people are available for this uh, project and, uh, and, and, and is it really so that uh, the supplier doesn't take those people to some other customers. Uh, the third bullet is the supplier interested in collaboration. Mm, we must really carefully uh, try to understand whether there is mutual uh, will to do the project together. Uh, what is the supplier's pricing principle? Is the supplier differentiated positively from others? Uh, what is the relationship of the supplier uh, to the buyer and other parties? Um, so this might be 
an important matter. Uh, for example, if uh, we choose several suppliers and they don't uh, go well together, so it might be that we have a problematic project there. And then finally, uh, about the continuity. Projects are often uh, very mission critical, uh, long lasting systems that must be run for the long time. And uh, it is many times important for the buyer uh, that the supplier is a stable uh, uh, entity, stable uh, firm uh, that is capable of performing uh, over years in the future also. Uh, support and uh, maybe reconstruction and refurbishment and modernizations for uh, the system that we are now going to procure from the project. Okay, uh, then uh, some decision-making criteria uh, of customers when choosing a project supplier. Uh, in this picture there are four criteria. So the price-benefit ratio, credibility of the project supplier, technical solutions, and project execution. And I have marked some uh, bullets uh, in this specific description uh, column uh, with green color, the kind of a, to uh, highlight uh, these issues, but they are not necessarily more important than others. Uh, but still, I wanted <laughs> for some reason to highlight them. Okay, uh, starting from the first one, price-benefit ratio. Uh, total price, uh, risk associate, uh, associated with the price uh, benefits. Uh, for example, the cost of maintenance and uh, life cycle costs and also what we can, in general, what our business can benefit from the supplier if we choose that supplier. Then uh, the credibility. Uh, criterion, uh, supplier's experience, references, annual sales revenue, and the financial standing of the supplier. So we want the supplier to be in the market maybe several years from now on so that we can rely, that we can have support if we need. And maybe we also want to have the supplier to be a, be a big enough uh, firm so that if uh, people leave uh, for turnover um, uh, from uh, the supplier's organization, then they are big enough to hire new people to support, for example, our system. Then technical solutions, are there risk associated? Well, this is the kind of a twofold thing. Uh, maybe we want to have the newest technology and newest solution and most efficient way uh, of, of doing uh, things in the system that we are going to procure, but uh, the problem might be that there are also risks uh, if we are kind of a, uh, guinea pigs as customers for our suppliers and they are kind of a testing so new solutions with us so that, that those uh, solutions don't uh, even function yet because of technological problems. Uh, how long are uh, the products support, uh, supported? Uh, the development of uh, potential uh, or development potential of the offered product uh, in this uh, green color text, uh, I have marked even that the standard solution that the supplier uh, might provide us could uh, ensure the best development path for uh, us because the supplier has delivered the same kind of a solution for other customers and then they are really developing uh, with new uh, volumes and new issues uh, that uh, system that they once delivered to us. Or then it can be that uh, we appreciate very unique and non-standard thing that just is tailored to our uh, uh, business needs. Then the final uh, criterion, project uh, execution. Uh, so how much involved is required from us? So if the supplier is a very kind of a newcomer in the market and so on, it even can be that the supplier needs to uh, learn 
our business and we must teach a lot the supplier before uh, the supplier can deliver its uh, solution then delivery time issues sufficiency of resources uh, and their competencies so this is generic list uh, generic four criteria of uh, uh, a buyer uh, using when choosing a project supplier there can be more uh, criterion and, uh, and and this is not uh, kind of an exhaustive list well um, that was uh, all I wanted to uh, say this time um, thank you for participating in this uh, video lecture and looking forward to seeing you in next lectures bye